Today, I'm going to show you how you can do a volumetric survey on either a hill or a stockpile using a surveying total station. Now this hill is definitely nice and scenic for the park, but I'm curious to see how much dirt was used in a stockpile in order to form this hill. And so using a surveying total station, we're gonna be able to acquire highly accurate positions on the hill. And all of the points that we collect with the total station will allow us to create a base surface below the stockpile of the hill. And taking the differences of the two surfaces will allow us to calculate the volume of the stockpile. Now the first thing we need to do is establish a control network around the hill. I'm going to be placing four control points into the ground and this will be the location at which we set up our total station every time. Now it's important that we get every corner of the hill so we don't want any blocked areas. I always like to set up my control network on the outside making sure that I can see at least two other points from each point. That way we'll be able to measure with our total station every single spot on this hill. All right I'm going to set the first control point for our network right here. Now usually I would use pink or orange ribbon, but today I only have blue ribbon, so we'll have to make do with what we have. There we go, flush with the ground, and the ribbon will make it nice and easy to find uh, from a far away distance. Here I can see more of the stockpile hill that I couldn't see from on the first point. This is gonna be a great spot for our second point. All right, perfect. All right, now that I'm approaching this spot, I can see point number two from this location. I cannot see point number one, but that's okay because point number two can see it and future point number four will be able to see it. We can definitely see where point number four will go. So this spot right here will make a great place for point number three. All right, and right here, our last and final location, we can see point number three from this spot. We can see the first point that we set. Point number two is on the other side of the stockpile hill, but that's okay, we don't need to see it. As long as we can see two points, this will be a great spot for point number four. Okay, perfect. And now that we've set up our control network, it's time to set up our total station on point number one. All right, now while I'm setting up the total station over point number one, it's important to understand that while we are doing our volumetric survey, we're also going to need to traverse around the control points in order to obtain the coordinates of every point. Now we're not gonna be utilizing a set coordinate system like state plane coordinates. This entire project is going to be on a local coordinate system. That means this starting point right here is gonna have coordinates northing 5,000, easting 10,000, elevation 100, making this the origin point for our project. Now over here on point number four, we can see the total station in the distance. And I'm going to be setting up my back site on point number four. Now the way that this traverse is going to work is that anytime I take an observation, I'm going to be recording the distance as well as the angle at which we are observing this point. Since this is the first point we are observing between point number one and point number four, our angle is going to be zero. By taking the horizontal distance, we can then add it to either the northing or the easting. I'm gonna go ahead and add it to the northing. And I'm going to establish coordinates for point number four. This is how you set up a localized coordinate system. Now before we take a back sight reading, I'm gonna make sure to take the height of this instrument because we're going to need that information when it comes to data collection. And it looks like we're getting 4.90. All right, now that we've taken our back sight reading, we're gonna disassemble the bipod from our rod and we can start surveying this hill. Now with point number one here, I'm going to be utilizing the total station's robotic functionality to track this prism anywhere I go. That way I don't need to have another person behind the gun. Now there are going to be two parts to collecting data on a volumetric survey. The first is going to be to collect the base surface of the hill. So I will need to walk all the way around the bottom of this stockpile hill in order to measure out what the elevation is at the bottom of the hill. 
This will allow us to calculate the base elevation had the hill not been there in the first place. Once I've collected as much as I can from this setup, I will then be taking shots on top of the hill to create our volumetric elevation. Now to ensure that my distances are relatively the same between each point, I'm going to be pacing 10 paces between each of them and that'll create a 25 grid for our volumetric survey. All right, so the plan is I'm gonna get the base first and then I'm gonna go up to level two and take shots for the volumetric surface. I'll go up a third time, take some shots, and then the fourth time will be the outer ring, and I'll try to get some shots up at the top to get a fifth layer. Uh, so yeah, let's go. All right. And there we go. We finished data collection for the first setup. All right, now I've reattached the bipod to the pole, and that is because we're gonna be doing a foresight reading over to point number two. This foresight reading will allow us to establish the coordinates for this point as we continue our surveying traverse. Okay, and we are setting the rod here on point number two. And after taking the foresight reading, we can see we have an angle measure as well as a horizontal distance, and we're going to record this in our field book. This angle is the angle between point number four and point number two, with point number one being at the vertice of those two angles. All right, now that we've taken this foresight, it's time to box up the total station and set it up here on point number two. Okay, and now while I'm setting up the total station here on point number two, the back sight is set up back on point number one. This is because we're going to back sight the previous point that we were set up on. And after we do this and we take a look at our field notes, you can see that our angle is going to be zero and our distance should match the same distance that we had initially when we did our foresight. Now that this setup is complete, I can grab my rod, pull off the bipod and start taking shots for our volumetric survey. All right, now I'm going to be serving here to your left. There might be a little bit of overlap from the last setup, but that's okay. Overlap means more data, and more data is always a good thing. Remember, we're going to start by surveying at the bottom of the hill to get the base, and then we'll start working our way up. All right, let's get started. All right, done collecting data here at point number two. All right, now that I'm done collecting data here, I'm going to go to point number three where we will take a foresight and add that to our traverse so that we can calculate our coordinates for point number three. All right, I'm gonna set my foresight here on point number three. Technically, I'm setting the rod on point number three and taking a foresight reading. All right, and after taking a reading and finding the position of point number three, we could see our angle from point number one to point number three with point number two being at the center of the angle and the horizontal distance from point number two to point number three. All right, time to change this into a total station. Look at that, it's a total station now. And just like before, we've set up the back sight over at point number two. And now after taking an observation to our back sight at point number two, we have a zero degree azimuth angle and our distance matches our foresight from point number two to point number three. So we're looking good. Okay, and just like the last two setups, we're gonna go ahead and start collecting data here at setup number three. That's setup number three. And now, just like before, I'm going to take my rod and set it up on the foresight of the next point. And so this is merely going to be a check for point number four. By taking the angle and the distance from point number three, we can calculate the coordinates of point number four and compare them to our measured coordinates to ensure that we still have a high accuracy traverse. Once we've observed the foresight to point number four, it's time to set up the total station one last time on to point number four. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and take a back sight reading onto point number three. All right, after taking that observation, we have a matching distance, so our traverse is looking good. We'll look at those calculations later on, but now let's finalize our volumetric survey 
by capturing points here at point number four. Okay, all done. One final check will be to take a foresight reading over to point number one, just to ensure that the coordinates match. So we've done that and I've got the angle and the distance that we can then look at in the office. All right, now that we've measured everything, let's head into the office so that we can process all this data and get the volumetric measurements for this hill. Why, hello there. All right, now we're gonna take a look at the data and I'm going to divide this up into three different parts. The first part will be taking a look at the traverse of the control network. The second will be importing the data into AutoCAD Civil 3D. And for the third and final part, we'll be doing the volumetric computations also on Civil 3D. I've opened up my CSV file and as you can see, I have tons of points that I've measured. Up at the top here, I do have the control points that we set the total station and took foresight and backsight readings on. And all the points starting with point number 100 are all the shots that we took on the hill. Now looking at our field notes here, we have all of the angle measures, but we need to compute the coordinates using the conventional traversing method. I've gone over this extensively in another video, so you can definitely check that out, but I'm going to quickly go through it today just so you have a good understanding of how I calculated the coordinates in our traverse. I've set up this spreadsheet here with the four points that we observe and all of the internal angles, the horizontal and vertical distances, and this is how we're going to calculate the coordinates. First, I'm going to calculate the decimal degrees by simplifying our degrees minutes and seconds. And to check and make sure that our traverse closes, I'm gonna add up all the internal angles to make sure that we have 360 degrees. I'll do the sum of all these angles. And there we go, 360 degrees, so we have good readings for our internal angles. Next, I'm gonna go through the process of calculating the azimuths between each of the points. And we'll take the back azimuth, add the internal angle, back azimuth, add the internal angle, back azimuth, add internal angle, there we go. Now I'll calculate the latitude and departures by using the equations horizontal distance times the cosine of the azimuth and horizontal distance times the sine of the azimuth. All right, now to calculate the northings and easting, we'll start with our initial point number one with coordinates 5,000, 10,000, and we'll simply just add the latitudes and departures. So equals the previous northing plus the latitude, and I'll just copy that down, and the previous easting plus the departure. Copy that down. To calculate the elevation change, all I have to do is take the initial elevation for point number one, which was 100, and just add the vertical distance. So equals 100 plus vertical distance. We can just copy and paste, there we go. So these right here are the coordinates that we've calculated. I'm gonna go ahead and just hide all of our math. All right, now let's compare these calculated coordinates with the coordinates that were measured with the total station. And paste. Look at that, these are all pretty much right on. Within one hundredth of a foot, everything is checking out very nicely. So our traverse is looking good. All right, so I've updated our field notes, so now our coordinates are included here. And now it's time to bring in the points that we collected with the total station into AutoCAD Civil 3D. When you first open up AutoCAD Civil 3D, you're going to come over here to the Insert tab and select Point from file. Here you'll be able to select the CSV file from our total station. I'll click add and I'll select my file. Open. It recognizes the file and now I need to specify the point format. For me it's point number northing, easting, Z for elevation and D for description. After that I'll hit OK. And as you see I have a whole bunch of points that popped in so that tells us that the points were successfully imported. Now we need to classify these points into point groups so that we know what kind of points we're working with. In the prospector tab you're going to see point groups. Right click on point groups and select new. The first point group I want to create is my control, so I'm going to call this control. When it comes to point style, I want to make this one benchmark. That way it'll stand out among the other points. And I just want this to be the point number and the description. I'll come over here to the include tab. I'll select with raw description matching and I called all of my control points GCP. So I'm going to include GCP as the description. GCP. Okay, and there we go. Now our control points have been updated. You can see the point number 
as well as the description. The next point group I want to create is the base points that we collected on the hill. This will allow us to create our base surface for our stockpile. Once again, I'll right click on point groups, select new. I'll call this base and I'm going to change this back to basic. For this one, I only want the elevation. The point label doesn't exactly matter. I just like to see the elevations of the individual points rather than their point numbers or their descriptions. I'll go over to include, select the raw description base. Okay, and now all of my base points have elevations next to them, and I know that they've all been included into that point group. The last point group that we need to add are the points that we collected on the hill. These are our volumetric points, and they need to be in their own point group. So right click, new, I will call this volume, and come over to include, raw description, and I use the code GS, which stands for ground shots. And I'll hit okay. And there we go, now all the points are updated with their elevations next to them. Now that you've created all the point groups, it's time to create the surfaces that we're going to use for our volumetric measurements. Now the reason we created a point group separate for the control points is that we don't wanna include this in any of the surfaces. This is going to influence the calculations for the volumetric measurements, and we just don't wanna have an inaccurate uh, amount of material being calculated by having the control points included. The first surface we need to create is the base surface. If we come over here to surfaces in the prospector tab, I will right click and select to create surface. Here I can name my surface, so I'm gonna call this base, and I'm going to just change the style to a one foot contour. Okay, okay. Now we need to define what we wanna put in the surface. So I'll open up base, I'll come over to definitions, and right where it says point groups, I will right click and select add. I will then select my base point group. I'll hit okay. And congratulations, we've created the first surface, and that is the base surface. If we look into the object viewer, you can see this is a relatively flat surface, and that is because this is the calculated surface underneath the hill. Now, I'm going to create another surface, and this is going to be our stockpile surface. I'll hit OK. Same thing, I need to define what is in this surface. So I will right click, select. And it's important that you select both the volume points as well as the base points. The reason you're also selecting the base points is because you need the two surfaces to meet. If they're floating in two different spaces, then you cannot compute the volume because they don't touch each other. But if they do touch each other at the base, then you can calculate the differences in volume between both surfaces. So I will select base and volume. Okay. And now we've calculated the second surface. In object viewer, you can see this looks correct. This looks like the hill outside. So we're looking good. Now let's calculate the volume. In the command line, just type in volume and you're going to get the volume dashboard and you're gonna select that and this will open up a menu for you. Up at the top left where it says create new volume surface, you're going to select it and it's gonna ask you what you wanna name this and I'm going to just call it the volume. Now the volume surfaces, it's gonna ask for a base surface so I will select the base surface and then the comparison surface which I will select the stockpile surface and I'll hit okay. And there we go, now we've computed the volume, and according to this calculation, we have 8,660.71 cubic yards of material in this hill. If you guys wanna learn how to do volumetric measurements using a drone, then you're definitely gonna to wanna to subscribe to the YouTube channel because I'll be releasing that video in the near future. Thanks guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.